Picture perfect marriage imploded when I uncovered my wife's year long affair. My wife and I have been married since we were 25. We are 38 now. We met in college, got married, and everything has been great. We both graduated, got good jobs, and started our lives together. Me and my wife both made good money, so money was never an issue for us. My wife worked for her dad's small business while I worked for a very large company. After a few years, my boss left the company out of nowhere and they needed someone to take over. The only person who knew how to run the department was me. So, I got a major pay jump, better bonus, better benefits. The works. So, at 28 I was making probably three times more than my wife. At 28, the same year, my wife gave birth to our first daughter. Then, two years later, our second. My wife, due to working for her father, was able to be more diverse in working. Well, around five years ago, my father-in-law passed away unexpectedly. That left my mother-in-law and wife in a hard position. Sell the company or run it themselves. My mother-in-law had no clue how to run it, so my wife said she would do it. After my wife took the company, it did just as well as when her father ran it. With that being said, my wife got a huge pay increase, more than me. I was proud of her. Going from a basic worker to running a whole company isn't easy. Anyway, our daughters started suffering from not seeing their parents. Me and my wife discussed one of us staying home. She said, the company you work for will be fine without you. Mine could go under, I agreed, so I quit my job and became a stay-at-home dad slash husband. I do everything. I make sure the girls are all taken care of. I cook, clean, fix things, make sure errands are run, you name it. I pamper my wife when she gets home from working. This went well for a while until about a year ago. My wife was always very appreciative of what I did and loved it. She has become very mean lately. Like just saying things like, do you do anything or how about you work for real? What? I work my crap every day making sure you don't have to lift a finger when you get home at all. Also, I had a real job, but I quit to raise and take care of the girls, our home, and you. Not to mention my wife is very sexy. Always has been. She quit initiating lovemaking and when I ask she is never in the mood. That was very odd. Eventually, I quit trying. I just thought, with all the pandemic crap and everything else, she was just very stressed and it was getting to her. I started trying harder to make her happy. Nothing ever worked. Last weekend, my oldest had a softball game. So, I get everything ready and we go. During the game, I wanted to take a video for my mom and dad since they live in another state and don't get to see my daughters that often. I forgot my phone so I asked my wife if I could see hers. She had been attached to it all day so it would be good for her to get off it. Anyway, she hands it to me and says she is going to get a drink and a snack. She gets up. I video my daughter when a message comes up on some app. I check and I can't even fathom what I see. My wife and this guy from her work, who is 8 years younger, are sending attractive videos and pics. Talking about how great the lovemaking was and then me. He is saying how I am some wimp who can't get a real job taking care of his women, and my wife agrees with him. I couldn't believe this crap I saw. I was so devastated and angry all at the same time. I heard my wife coming back, so I closed the app and started videoing. On the ride home and when we get home, my wife tries to talk to me and I am not in the mood. Eventually, we lay in bed and, for the first time, I guess they hadn't met in a while, tried to have sex. I tell her I am not in a mood. She says, if you are going to be a tramp about everything, you can sleep on the couch. I got up and went to the couch and now I've been here since. I don't know how to move forward with this. I really just don't know where to start. My wife was my everything, my girls are my world, and all of that is dying. Any advice would be wonderful as I really effing need it. Edit, should have mentioned I did send screenshots of the conversation to my phones. I do have the evidence. Update 1, I want to thank you all for the advice you all gave. First off I do have the text, pics, videos and everything. Second, I don't any of the company. It is 50-50 between her and my mother-in-law. Third, I can't sleep in the bed. I have been sleeping the guest bedroom every night and that is where I will be staying. To answer, I have decided to divorce her. Anyway this morning, I called a firm in another town to avoid anyone finding out. Thankfully they were able to get me in this morning as someone had cancelled. After dropping off my girls I drove over there. To make a long story short, he is a very good lawyer. I showed him what I had. He said that luckily for me with the evidence I have she will be pretty much screwed in the divorce. Seeing as I quit my job to raise our girls, she is never home, she is having an affair, prioritizes this man over me and my girls, she will lose very easily. He basically said we will get child support, alimony, I will keep the house and she will have to pay for it as long as my girls live there. Also, he stated that we could even try for more money since I am considered no longer viable in the working world to help me pay for more education to get a job. Some of you were right. He said to not work until after the divorce is over. He said since you are the husband if you have a job you can lose a lot of this. He asked if I wanted full custody. I said that I don't mind my wife seeing her girls on the weekends every once in a while, but I would want mostly full custody. 
He said since she had an affair in the marital home I can basically do what I want. Since he stated bringing over a strange man over to the house put the girls in danger and makes her guilty. So, I will be going for full custody where she can get weekends once maybe twice a month. No man will be allowed around my girls and if there are she could face problems by me if I find out. I just don't want that pos around my girls. He eventually said to keep quiet until the draft are ready and then he will issue someone to serve her, and have it issued that she is required to leave the home. He said he should have it done sometime next week. He asked me to just keep quiet. He said I know it is hard and you are upset but just shut the hell up until everything is done. Once the divorce is over you can say whatever the hell you want about her, but until then keep your mouth shut. He said act as normal. He said, no fights, no issues, sleep in separate bed, and no sex. I said no problem but why? He said trust me just don't do it and do as I say. I just got home and have started getting ready for dinner and acting and being normal. I will be acting as if everything is okay until she is served next week. Thank you all for the advice and some very harsh words. And to the one guy who asked for my wife's bears. Just know. It seems all you have to do is ask her and she will send them so it isn't that hard it appears. Quick edit, he recommended I get an STD test. Plus, a DNA test on my girls. When I asked why he said, it is pretty rare incidents like this are the first time they have happened. So, yeah that effing hurt to hear and scared the hell out of me. Update 2, I have been feeling down and things have been rough. To preface, I have talked to my lawyer about these posts. I didn't go into too much detail. They did tell me though as long as I keep them brief and not super specific that I can post, but I just have to be careful about what I put on to not lead too many details. That is that. So, for quick update, like I said will be brief and not too specific for legal reasons. We will start with the test. I was able to get an STD on myself and a paternity test on my girls. I came out that I thankfully have no disease and I am clear. Now for the one that I am sure most of you are wondering. The test on my two girls. Am I the dad? I will always be their dad regardless of the results. However, I am here to say that, yes, I am their biological father. I have never been so happy to know that I am their dad. Never thought I would have to question it, but here we are. As for what has happened with my soon-to-be ex. Well she is out of the house and I have been granted full temporary custody. In the future, maybe a while, I will go into more specific details. However, for now she is out of the house. My lawyer set everything up for me to get my girls and make sure that we legally handled her being removed from the home. It wasn't pretty, but details for another time. She was served at work, and from what I know it wasn't pretty. Like I said though, details for another time. My girls know what is going on. My oldest knows we are separating. And one of her friend's parents split for the same reason. She has seen what happened with her friend and doesn't want us to split. She has been crying for me to let mommy come home. I will be getting them in with a child therapist to explain and help them understand from direction of my lawyer. My youngest just wants mommy to come home and misses her. It kills me and makes me feel like a terrible father, and they probably hate me now. Sometimes I think I should just let their mother cheat on me to keep the family unit to make my girls happy. I just can't do that. Sometimes I think about talking about allowing an open relationship and we can just wait till the girls are older, but that won't work for me. Plus, I know the girls will pick up on it and will not like it that mommy and daddy don't love each other. As for my ex, she is living with her mother at this point. My mother-in-law has called me and asked to meet. I agreed and we will meeting at some point. She didn't ask for details, as she said we will talk later, but begged me not to take her granddaughters away from her. I said you are a great and loving grandmother, and as long as you can separate my girls from what is going on between your daughter and I, I see no issue with you being able to see them, and I will not take them out of your life. She thanked me and that is it. My ex has been trying to call me and text me trying to figure out us. Under direction of my lawyer he has had it set up, so that I can talk to her through a trackable method and it is purely about the girls. No more no less. So, that is it for now. We'll probably keep updating and once this is all over with, I will make one big update for all the details I have to be careful about as of now. Update 3, I had Thanksgiving with my soon-to-be ex and mother-in-law. I did this purely for the girls and made sure with my lawyer this was only about the girls and not about reconciliation. That was taken care of. First I have met with my mother-in-law pre-Thanksgiving. We met and had a pretty mutual discussion. Mainly just things about how we will handle my daughters after. My mother-in-law did tell me some stuff about my soon-to-be ex. I guess my soon-to-be ex was cheated on by her HS boyfriend. Didn't even know she dated anyone. I guess this guy came from one of those families according to my mother-in-law and they told her to avoid him. Well I guess one night she caught him with his head under another girl's dress and tongue deep in a girl's jewelry box. Why my mother-in-law couldn't believe she would do this. She had a couple of they met in college but she knew they wouldn't last. She said that as soon as she met me she found her son-in-law. Says she is so sorry for her daughter's actions and will make sure that she doesn't try to do anything problematic with the divorce. Anyway a couple days before Thanksgiving my mother-in-law asked for me to come over for dinner with the girls. I said will she be there? She said yes. I said I can't be with her there. 
She said she understands but asked if we could put on the holiday one more time for the girls. She said I know you have a lawyer. Ask them and if they said it is a bad idea I get it. I did, and they said tell your wife via the app this is purely for the girls to avoid any confusion. So, I did. She had contacted me before about coming over. She has been begging me to see me and the girls. The girls have been begging me to see their mom. I swallowed my pride for my girls and we went. It was awkward. My soon-to-be ex gave our daughters a hug, fine, then tried to hug and kiss me. I just avoided her and went to give my mother-in-law a hug. My soon-to-be ex tried to act like husband and wife and was trying to talk to me. I answered with yes and no's and helped my mother-in-law finish dinner and clean up. My mother-in-law is religious and wanted to do a prayer and my soon-to-be ex sat next to me. I held my daughter's hand, my wife tried to grab mine I pulled away. I know it may seem crappy but I don't want her touching me. I am an atheist but out of respect for my mother-in-law I go along with it. Dinner was fine. Again soon to be ex trying to act like we are going to be married and asking about Christmas and vacations. I guess she wants to take with us as a family. When she mentioned this stuff I knew going over was a mistake. We finished dinner and I pretty much got up, cleaned my daughters and I dishes, then was ready to go. My daughters wanted to watch a movie with their mother we always watch. I let them and my soon to be ex tried to cuddle next to me on the couch. I sat in the chair after that. My mother-in-law was very mad at my soon to be ex the whole night for how she acted. I could tell by the look she gave her. Movie ended and we started to leave. My daughters fell asleep so I carried them to the car. Went in grabbed something and my soon to be ex grabbed me in tears begging to work on things and that she wants to be a family and is so sorry for what happened. Before I could say anything my mother-in-law grabbed her by the hair, not joking, yanked her told me goodnight and began yelling at her daughter. So, yeah. Told my lawyer everything and said nothing indicated reconciliation and you made that clear in your messages. You are fine. Wife once again calling and begging now to work on us. She gets left on read. I will only talk about the girls and I am sure they are going to want to do the same for Christmas. I don't know if I can or if it is okay. Once again I will discuss with my lawyer. Update 4, this will not be long, but things have gotten very bad for my girls. Basically my girls had two sessions this week with their therapist. The first one was good. My girls came out what seemed to be more a peace and calmer than usual. I talked to the therapist after and she seemed to be very good and understand my girls well. So, I took them to their second one and crap is completely effed. Basically the therapist explained, in age-appropriate terms, that the reason me and their mother is separating that their mother cheated, had an affair, and betrayed me. I knew eventually she would, but I didn't think it would happen this soon. I went to get my girls and basically it was a burst of tears and them climbing all over me and giving me hugs crying saying they love me. I am happy they love me but this is not what I wanted to happen with my girls. I asked the therapist why did she tell them. She said the girls knew you two are separating, and the girls noticed you seemed to be really mean and unloving with their mother. Your girls aren't stupid, she told me, they know how you are and they know how you treat their mom. They wanted to know why you are separating. I tried to walk around it the best I could, she said, but the girls are not going to progress in therapy if we don't tell them. I am not going to go into detail on what exactly she said to them, but it was age appropriate. But they know the age appropriate version of their mother being unfaithful. I think my oldest could maybe handle this and be okay, but not my youngest. So, we get home and my girls won't let go of me. They are literally crying the whole night, so I order in food. I put in their favorite movies in my bedroom, and we laid there all night. They fell asleep and I went to the bathroom and just cried. My soon-to-be ex doesn't even realize the pain she is causing our girls. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. The therapist told me we could try medication for a bit till they get used to the new normal. I refused to do so, which she supported and said it was just an option, as I am not drugging them. Disclaimer, she cannot give the drugs, she said they would need to see their primary and they would probably diagnose my girls with something that would allow them to medicate them. I would rather deal with my daughter's emotions the healthy way. I won't have to worry about Christmas as my daughters hate their mother now. How I know. My oldest said she never want to see her mom again. My youngest follows what her older sister says, even though she may actually agree. I was shocked. I said, you don't hate her, you may be mad but you don't hate her. She loves and cares about you. My oldest just said no she doesn't and then just cried into my arms, until she fell asleep and so did my youngest. So, this is my life now. Update 5, the girls are doing better. They are still going to the same therapist, but they are doing better. Kind of coming to the realization. My daughters say they don't hate their mother anymore. However, they have made it very clear that they don't want to see her for a long time. Their words not mine. We will see how that goes. My wife has been made aware of them knowing. She tried calling my girls. They answered, but my wife has since been a bit more respectful of mine and my girls boundaries. I think the realization is starting to hit her. Anyway, to the AP. Already knew he was a pos, but f this man is awful. So, someone asked if there was an OBS. I didn't know. I started looking though some stuff for my wife's work. I was able to find a piece of paper with all employees numbers and emergency contacts. 
I called his. It was his wives. Turns out he is married. I didn't think he was. Also, he has a toddler. Well I told his wife and she didn't believe me and hung up. A little later she calls me back and asked to meet. I meet her. I show her everything. She asks if we can go to my car. We do. Within a second of closing a door, she burst into tears. Crying saying how could he do this to me, what did I do wrong, etc. Well I said you did nothing wrong and gave her my lawyer's number. After that she asked how long, I said I think a year, maybe a tad longer. She then goes from upset to effing pissed. I asked her why. She proceeded to rip her hair off, it was wig. Tell me she just beat cancer. I guess after their child was born they found some stuff odd while she was in the hospital. They found a tumor. So over the last year and a half. She had two surgeries, has gone through chemo, and was on medication. She looked very good so I was surprised. She said she beat and she is better. But they haven't had segs in like two years. She said between my pregnancy and cancer I couldn't. She got really sick while pregnant. Then her cancer just killed her almost. Once she started feeling a bit better, she felt horrible in herself. She started gaining weight from the meds, lost her hair, and wasn't as pretty as she used to be. She said, I was now at the point where she could make love, and was going to surprise him here soon for being a caring loving husband. That is off the table. She started crying about her child growing up in a broken home and I consoled her. She then tried to make love with me, I said no you are not in the right state of mind and this not healthy. She thanked for my honesty. Then proceeded to ask for the evidence. I gave it to her and she went home. We have texted a couple times since we are both BS. So we will keep in contact. So, thank you for the few people who mentioned looking for the OBS. I didn't even think about it. Update 6, so I am already being asked about did I have Christmas with the OBS. The answer is yes I did. It was very nice. Honestly, it was wonderful. The whole day was really amazing all things considered. I laid out a lot of the girls presents from Santa. This will probably be the last year my oldest believes in Santa, so I need to make it count. Anyway, I lay out the presents early, still dark no sun, and the girls wake up probably within in 15 minutes saying that Santa had came. I drag my tired crap out of bed and the girls open their presents. They were very happy. After I popped on a movie and the girls snuggled up next to me and they fell asleep instantly. I eventually got up and made some coffee. My youngest woke up and said I am hungry daddy. So, I put an apron on her and let her help me make breakfast. My oldest then woke up and we ate. They played with their presents and had a blast. It made me very happy. I need them to get ready later in the evening so they could go see their mother and grandmother. I am usually more strict on them about being ready but with everything happening I will admit I have been more lenient. They get ready and say they really don't want to go see their mom. I told them that their mom loves them. My therapist has said I need to encourage their relationship for proper growth. Plus, if I don't she said my wife could use it against me in court as isolation. She said the girls can make the decision to have a relationship with their mother when they are older. Also, my wife knows of the therapist and they have talked. She basically told my wife that you betrayed your husband and it is clear that your husband are the girl's favorite. They are going to need to see a lot from you for them to eventually trust and love you again. Then I said, don't punish grandma for your mother's actions. Go for grandma. They agreed. I took them and it was pretty easy going. I got there called and my mother-in-law. She came out and grabbed the girl's things. They were going to stay the night for Christmas. My mother-in-law asked if they could. I asked my lawyer and said it was fine. However, don't leave them there for days or do it often. But that night was fine. I did tell the girls that if they wanted to come home at any time that all they had to do was call me and I would come get them. As I was leaving, my soon-to-be ex walked out. I don't know what they said, but my soon-to-be ex said something to my mother-in-law was a confused face and my mother-in-law gave her a stern faced, I think, no. My soon-to-be ex looked at me with tears in her eyes and waved. I just drove off. I had left food in the oven and everything on warm for the OBS to show up. She eventually did and when she arrived she didn't have her toddler. I asked where they were at? She said that I guess her in-laws wanted to see them for Christmas, and so did its father. Basically, she ran the same deal as me through our lawyer. I was like okay. She was in a very pretty dress, leggings, fluffy boots, and nice wig. We ate dinner and just talked about our past and got to know each other. After dinner we went to the couch and I turned on movie. We talked about other stuff. Eventually I got a bottle of wine. I don't drink often but I usually like a certain wine on Christmas. She asked if she could have some. I said are you okay too? She said yes, so I gave her some. Our conversation basically went from our past, to our interest, to our current issues, crying, and eventually joking and laughing. As we drank more we joked more. Two bottles later, that never happens, our conversation turned into sex. Basically kinks, what we want slash miss, and other stuff. We both found out that we are similar in this aspect. Pretty much everything we are. She said that your wife was lucky and effed up. I said so did your husband. I know some of you said I should affirm her last try at me, by saying that she is pretty but I just thought it was a bad thing to do when it came to love making. 
I did and she said she knows. I said you can actually take that wig off if you don't want to wear it. I said you look amazing without it. You are very beautiful with a pixie cut. She did and cried out a thank you. We kept talking about that stuff and eventually we started watching a movie cuddling. Now, mind you we're both inebriated. When me and my wife used to cuddle, my soon to be ex actually liked it and it relaxed her when I would rub her chest. More like a chest massage. I was doing it to her out of habit. Eventually she said that feels good. I freaked out and stopped and said I am so sorry I didn't realize I was even doing it. She said it was fine and asked if I would keep doing it as it felt good and relaxed her. I asked are you sure? She said yes, so I did. Not going to lie, I was aroused. She noticed and started rubbing me. I went whoops I am sorry. She asked if I wanted her to stop. I said don't feel like you have to or anything, she said she wants to. So we did that for a few minutes before she kisses me and I did kiss her back. This eventually lead to her unzipping my pants and her giving me head, me then forcing her down, and giving her disc. Which then lead to some very rough love making in the living room, kitchen, and the office. We eventually lead to us in my bed where we had more passionate love making. Lots of kissing and very slow love making. When we finished we cuddled and cried and eventually feel asleep. Next morning we ate breakfast and got showered. I asked did you plan on this? She laughed and said no, a girl always has an extra pair of clothes. She then asked me as she was leaving did you feel anything last night? I was honest and said yes. However, we need to make sure that we are worried about us and our kids and these feelings aren't false. She agreed and said we will explore them later. She actually gave me a kiss on the cheek and thanked me for a great night. Said I will text you later. I went and picked up my girls and they actually had a good time. They said mom was on her best behavior for the most part. So yeah right now I just finished prepping dinner and will be spending the evening with my girls. Thank you everyone. These reddit posts are like my therapy lol. Update 7, things have just been very busy. So this won't be too long. Also, I don't blame for many of you thinking this is fake. Reddit is full of liars and crap stirrers and storytellers. Anyway, girls are doing much better between their therapist and activities they're having a much better time. They are still having their moments but they are doing much better. As for me and OBS. We still talk almost daily, but have done nothing physical since we discussed that even though we do not regret what we did we shouldn't have done it. Now for my soon to be ex. For few weeks after Christmas, she was still trying pretty hard to get me to talk to her. However, that has for the most part stopped. She now has as a lawyer. My lawyer was made aware and has said that our meetings will be coming soon. She has realized that I am actually done and that she can't get me to change my mind. I am sure they will want to try reconciliation but that will not be happening. She is still calling and texting me every now and again to try to get me to reconsider, but she gets left on read. As to the OBS ex. He has has actually been arrested. Not too much detail for now, but I guess he confronted my soon to be ex at work and they got into verbal altercation where she threatened to call the cops. He then assaulted her which lead to the workers they're getting involved and pretty much dropping him. Cops showed up, arrested him, soon to be ex is pressing charges. I am sure he will be getting a lawyer against her for their affair but I haven't heard anything. Mother-in-law told me this and said you can see her if you want, I guess he blacked her eye and busted her lip, but she said karma is a tramp and this is her so. I have not seen my wife and neither have the girl since the incident. Other than this unless something crazy happens you probably won't hear from, until after our first meeting with our lawyers. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Found out cheating wife faked a girl's trip to get with her male best friend. Everything between me and my wife, 31F, seemed perfect on the outside. We have been together since high school. It was like something out of a romantic comedy, she was the nerdy girl who spent her lunch periods in the library and I was the football player. Even though historically we would have never spent time together, she and I ended up falling for each other. Right after college, we ended up getting married so we could move forward and start our lives together. We bought our first house very young, we both scored very nice jobs, and we started planning to have kids. Fast forward three years and we have one son and another baby on the way. In high school, my wife had a friend who had always rubbed me the wrong way. It was so obvious that he had a thing for her but she constantly insisted that he was just nice. I tried to explain to her that it made me uncomfortable when she spent a lot of time with him because it was clear to me that he liked her and didn't care that she and I were happily married. Whenever I would bring it up it would always cause an argument, so eventually I gave up. They talked on the phone all the time. They would always be texting each other and sending memes and they had a ton of little inside jokes that I always felt like I was on the outside of. He didn't attend the same college as us but they reconnected after graduation when we all moved back to our hometown. As it turned out, he was studying in the same field as her so they were able to land a job at the same company. My wife didn't have a ton of friends in high school, so when she made a lot of friends at her new job, she was very excited. She was buddy-buddy with a lot of the girls in the office and they would go to brunches, theater, and they would even have sleepovers on occasion. I was really happy for her because I knew she was looking for a group like that for so long, and part of me thought she would be spending less time with her male best friend. Last winter I started to notice the difference in how she interacted with him. She didn't talk to him as often, 
or at least I didn't see them talking as much. He stopped coming over to the house and I only saw him on occasion when I would visit the office. I was hopeful that she had outgrown him and they were finally parting ways. One day, my wife came to me and told me that a bunch of the girls from the office were planning a girls trip for the weekend. She told me it would be harmless fun, just drinking some wine and talking while they relaxed with their face masks. She left Friday evening and I stayed at home with the kids. I genuinely hadn't thought anything was wrong. Saturday evening rolls around and I'm in bed searching through Netflix looking for something to watch when my phone rings. It was a phone call from her male best friend. Right away I thought it was strange because he and I had never really been close, so him calling me was bizarre. I answered the phone and waited for him to say something, but he never did. I was about to hang up the phone when I heard a part of the conversation they were having. He was telling my wife how much he loved her. My wife was on the other line as well. Wherever she had gone for the weekend, he had gone as well. I absolutely could not put down the phone while I listened. She told him that she regretted what they had done a few weeks ago, and that last night was a mistake. She had gone there to have a conversation with him and end everything. It was then that I realized there never was a girl's trip. They continued their conversation until I could hear them kissing on the other line, then I finally hung up. I couldn't believe what I'd just heard, I felt sick to my stomach and I wanted to scream but I couldn't do anything to upset my children. At first, I thought it was such an odd time to be butt dialed by him. The more I thought about it, people only butt dial their recent contacts, so it didn't make sense for him to have accidentally called me. He did it on purpose. He called me while he had that conversation, hoping I would overhear it. About an hour passed, then I got the text messages. They were all from him, they were screenshots of conversations, pictures they had sent each other, and even a clip from a video that he had taken at the lake house they were staying in. I was absolutely shocked, it was the last thing I wanted to see but I was glad he sent it. I didn't say anything back. He probably thought that he had won this imaginary fight that he and I have been having for the past 10 years, but I would find a way to make them both pay. I sat on the information, stewing in all of the ideas that I had to get revenge on them both. I knew that I wanted to get them fired, but that didn't seem like punishment enough. My wife came back Sunday night and couldn't even meet my eyes. She felt guilty for what she did, as she should have. By the end of the week, she would only feel worse. I pretended like nothing happened, not wanting to stir the pot and upset our children any more than they would be after everything. Their well-being was my priority, which apparently she didn't care too much about. On Wednesday I was able to get a meeting with her boss. Her company had a strict no dating within the workplace rule, so I knew at the very least they would both be reprimanded for that. The real kicker in all of it was that one of the pictures my wife's friend sent me was of them together in the break room. I had attended many company Christmas parties in the past so I recognized it well. Her boss was horrified when she saw the images of them together. No doubt she was thinking about how she drank her coffee at the table they screwed on. Now, I knew my wife and I knew her well. I was certain she had no clue her friend sent me any of the information that he did. When she found out what he did she would want nothing to do with him. His little power play cost him any chance he had of being with her after our separation. As soon as I stepped out of the office I watched her boss storm over to her friend and practically drag him into the office. I went right over to my wife's desk and I dropped an envelope with all of the printed documents I had been sent alongside divorce papers. She had one of those open offices that didn't like to use cubicles or box their workers in, so everybody got a good view when I served her the papers. I told her that I wanted a divorce, then with my voice raised higher than it normally would be, I told her I knew everything about her affair with her friend. I watched the women around her raise their eyebrows and hurriedly look away as if they couldn't hear anything. My wife's face was as red as a tomato, she was so embarrassed. I walked out of the office, knowing that she was likely about to get fired for what happened in the break room. I took the kids to my brother's house and we stayed with him for a few weeks while I looked for another apartment. She and I are officially divorced, but we're still going through custody hearings for the children. We have agreed on joint custody but the biggest issue is figuring out the holiday schedule. She and her friend were both fired, and from what I understand she has completely cut him off. She moved back in with her mom and I ended up selling the house that I got to keep.